Hi there, welcome to Tech Tickle. Today's episode is going to be all about what the CPUs that cover the entirety of my face. I'm going to teach you all about mitigating risk, what to look for when buying used, how to properly test them, which ones to pick, and so on. So stay tuned. <laughs> So the first thing I'd like to discuss with regards to these little bad boys is how to mitigate risk and how durable you can expect these things to be. First point I want to make, CPUs are incredibly durable. In my experience, in my time, I have purchased literally hundreds with my dogs fighting in the background. And I have had perhaps two end up being bad, non-functional, unusable. They weren't even completely bad. They just would have random errors here and there. And through diagnostic, you know, methodology, I ended up determining that the CPU was the problem and I checked them. Uh, but otherwise, hundreds upon hundreds of used CPUs that I have had in my possession have been perfectly fine. Which is good, because that makes this very expensive purchase a safe one. So, how do you cut down on the limited risk associated with buying CPUs? Well, the first thing you do is you look at the fucking thing. CPUs are tiny, so it's not a lot to inspect. They have an internal, or excuse me, they have a, a I guess an internal heat sink? Is that what it's called? Integrated heat sink? What's the I stand for in IHS? It's, called, it's a fucking IHS. It's a goddamn heat sink. It's a, it's a cover over top of the actual die, the guts that make this thing work. In the back, what we got is the connectors. Uh, they're little contacts, basically, gold contacts that the pins will connect with. And the little doodads in the center here, you'll see on the bottom. Uh, you got real close and see that, maybe? I don't know if I can do it. Uh, they look like doodads. As long as none of those are visibly broken, and as long as none of the contacts are visibly burnt or not there, and as long as the heat sink is not loose and appears to have been removed, your CPU is probably good to go, at least from a physical standpoint. And again, I would recommend that you always test whenever possible. Even if that means bringing along a corresponding motherboard, RAM, and PSU to uh, some guy's house with an HDMI cable just to see if you get something uh, from the CPU when you boot it up. It might not be good still. Uh, there could still be something wrong with it that you'll reveal through extensive testing later. That's always a possibility, but the chances are really, really slim. So you can feel pretty confident that once it boots and you can see it working, it's probably good. With regards to durability, you want to cover your ass even more, get one that's still under warranty. Yes, I know, technically speaking, warranty does not transfer from user to user when a fucking piece of equipment is sold and bought secondhand. I get that. But practically speaking, come on. A receipt can be handed to someone else. Even if there's no receipt, most companies don't require receipts these days. Last thing to consider with regards to durability, consider the age of the fucking thing. If it is particularly old, it might be near the end of its natural lifespan. Um, but otherwise, anything that's been manufactured in the last, I would say, seven or eight years is probably good. Not that you need to go back that far. As for which CPU you should buy, uh, it's kind of hard for me to make this video not period specific. Things change all the time, and as soon as I reference one CPU from today's market, it will potentially be irrelevant in tomorrow's. As of today, in February of 2016, the 4-in-1 rule, as I like to call it, uh, still applies. So what you want are four physical cores with strong, single threaded performance. There are some games like Fallout 4 that are starting to make use of and show visible performance benefits from the hyper-threading associated with a quad core like an i7. Uh, that said, it's not particularly wide-reaching yet. DirectX 12 has not exactly come to full development ubiquity yet. So uh, it'll be a ways away before that starts becoming a reality that all gamers should consider. But for the majority of you, that i5 with um, four cores and that strong single-threaded performance is going to be the way to go for most of you with mid-range kind of money. Some things to note. Be wary of 4-core CPUs that aren't actually 4-core CPUs. This is something that everybody should know, but the FX 4300, 4350, the Athlon 860K, 870K, which was just released, um, the 760K, 750K, and so on. All those AMD CPUs up and down their budget line 
are all not actual four core CPUs. They're fine um, if you're buying new. They're, they're good budget CPUs, I guess, in that regard. But when you can get things that perform just as well or better for much cheaper, why would you? Also be wary of the cost associated with the motherboard that you're gonna to need to buy to support the CPU. The best example I can think of are X58 motherboards that are used to support these motherfuckers i7 900 series chips first generation i7s they are like 300 fucking dollars on ebay which is which is just bizarre i mean well it's not bizarre because you you motherboards are not particularly durable they burn out easy cpus last forever so it kind of makes sense that there's a bunch of these fucking floating around and no goddamn x58 motherboards people are like turning to server boards to try and support these things and make gaming rigs out of as you've seen in various videos around the internet and uh it's fine, I guess, if that's the route you want to go, but you spend up, spend up, you spend up spending way too much money for it. In particular, which CPUs do I recommend you buy right now, February 2016? Well, if you're going for extreme budget, I think the Q6600 is actually off the table. I would not recommend you buy it. In this market, the fact that you can buy Quad Core Phenom 2 965 Black Editions for the same price you can buy Q6600, the choice is obvious. Couple that with the fact that you can use some Asus motherboards to core unlock dual core phenom twos and you're you're even better off um i wouldn't necessarily recommend that though just just go for the 965 uh, which you will find everywhere and you should be happy i bought my last 965 for uh 35 dollars i think and i typically pay anywhere from 25 to 40 for them so you pair that with an am3 motherboard and by the way not am2 plus those take ddr2 memory which is really expensive am3 and you're talking a total of maybe 70 to 80 dollars for the good foundation for a budget rig you really can't beat that stepping things up a tier i would say sandy bridge locked i5s are a great option for anyone looking to uh, support a mid-range graphics card the phenom 2 quad cores are really good for mid to low end stuff but sandy bridge i5s will do just fine with radeon 7950s even 7970s uh, GTX 680s, cards like that. Uh, you won't get significant bottlenecking and they will feel snappy and fast just like a modern CPU because pretty much they are. They're only like three and a half years old or some shit, so uh, you should be good. Is there anything available higher up? Well, I have gotten some Haswell i5s for under $200 here in Canada, but you can see how the price curve sort of goes when you get into newer generation stuff. Uh, and there really is a sweet spot to be had. And I think there's a hard limit on $100 or so Sandy Bridge i5s that you should be setting yourself to if you're going to be building a used budget gaming rig. Um, unless, of course, you come across an incredible deal and you'll know it when you see it. I mean, if somebody's selling you uh, a 3570K for like $125, eat that up. That's fucking good. Um, but otherwise, you can always find i5 2400s for under $100. By the way, just a tip, get a Z68 motherboard or something like that, or a P67 to support it, just in case you do come across a 2500K you can make use of. Anyway, I think that pretty much concludes the advice I have to convey right now. I can't, I'm looking at my notes here, and I can't really find anything else that I wanted to tell you. So, good luck, and uh, happy hunting. And uh, in the comments, please let me know what kind of deals you found, and I'll see you in the next one.